Today's tutorial is about how to use iMovie. Now, my students are making videos for their science assignments, and I thought maybe I'll give them a uh, thing or two about how to use it. So I've opened up iMovie, some, much, some stuff po popped up, and I'm like, no, nah, I don't care. Close them all down. I've gone to my projects tab, and then I'm going to hit the plus sign. Plus sign, I'm going to make a movie. So that's a new movie. Wait for it to catch up. And it gives me a selection of themes I can choose from. A theme will just basically dictate how uh, one uh, cut will move to the next, you know, like transitions and maybe some stylistic choices. Um, I don't care, I'm just gonna pick boring, no theme, and give it a title, boring demo, hit enter. You can be a little bit less boring and call it not demo or something that's more appropriate. Now, uh, my view here is basically the timeline is on the bottom, so it moves from left to right, and that tells you that, you know, it shows you where your video clips are in sequential order. Uh, over here is my media, where I stick in the, in the media, so that's just photos, music, um, video clips, etc. And on this right-hand side is a display of what your final video might look like. Um, I'm going to start over here by clicking on demo. You could pick up video files and music, music etc. from these libraries. I'm just going to go and bring them in from my other sources. So here you would click on import media and you could plug in your iPhone and, and you know download video clips from there or you, if you've got an SD card from a DSLR video camera you can plug that in and f find those files there. I, I've already got some um, that I've made earlier. I'm just going to drag them in. So I'm going to click this file and just drag that into there. And I'm also going to get this video clip here and drag that one in. And I'm also going to uh, drag in a photograph because people use photographs in their videos. And I'm also going to throw in some music that I've paid for. Right, so I've got uh, two video clips, some music, a photograph, etc. So when you um, build your web, um, to, to start making your video file, you uh, click and drag out a selection of your video clip which you think is great and you drag that in. So this is my timeline. Now I can play it through and the uh, little display here will, will show what's going on. Now I would like to add that uh, for your video clips you don't want to highlight the entire thing because often this could be going to be you know, 5 maybe 15 uh, seconds of you going um, mm, um, scratching your face, scratching your nose, thinking about what you're going to say and go oh, oh, right, right, right and then you actually start talking. So that's where the point where you want to highlight and make a selection of the best bits of your video take so you don't have the junk at the start and the end of your video clip. So just top tip there. Uh, I'm going to throw in a little more, more than one video clip just so that you can see that uh, the variety of what's going on. So I've made my video, I've got some talking, lab, funny glasses, and then fire. Every video should have fire. Uh, that's not a pro prerequisite, but uh, if you want to add fire to your videos, that is cool. I won't disagree with that. And if you're uh, talking, let's say, I'm talking here, it's like, don't do this. Um, this powder could also be used for um, important applications such as applying toothpaste to a garden tile. I'll just drag that on top and above my video clip. So now when I play it through, talk, 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 photograph of a toothbrush and a tile. That's how you can do uh, the basic thing. People will make a video clip where they have an audio track or they're speaking, um, like they've got a script and they're gonna talk about. You can just do that all in one take or in you know, a several little clips. And then you have your photographs and video clips over the top of it to, uh, to make it visually interesting. So uh, you can't hear it very well because I'm using headphones right now. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, hold the, t the headphone and the microphone together. So I don't know if that came through on the audio just now, but I, uh, um, I could hear the audio track running right underneath all of these photographs and video clips underneath. That's the basic bits. If you also want to throw in some text because you can't pronounce a science word correctly, or if you are uh, trying to emphasize a point, um, you can go to the titles and drag something in. I don't think you can change where in the frame that this text appears. You just have to choose one that's a sort of a preset that's inappropriate. So here, uh, this is important for the exam and that way when I play it through now that text shows up on top of that photograph and I can move it around if I need to so over here this is also important for the exam 
So we got how to put in your video clips, how to put in photographs, how to add video clips on top of other things, and text. Let me see. Oh yes, uh, music. So I'm going to go over to my media here. I've got some music track here. I could just drag and attach that um, underneath. That's usually where I put it. I don't know if that's standard or not. Um, so here you see a green stem where it's uh, attaching to. Oh, dragged into something else. Interesting. Yep, and I can also um, trim it so I can um, tr make it longer or shorter. Uh, you'll notice that your mouse icon changes when you uh, move to the edges of the boundaries. If I'm going to do a transition, uh, see this little bit, bit here, when I play it through, it just, it just cuts right to the next thing, nothing fancy. If you want to do a transition, I'm going to go to Transitions tab and I'm going to Fade to White, which makes sense because I go into a dark background for a flame test. Yes, I know it's appropriate. That's how it transitions. So if you want to do fancy things like that, you can by using transitions. Might I note to you that when you do have a music track underneath your video clip, don't make it too loud because I won't be able to hear you, nor will anyone else who's listened to your video. So you can mouse over this little boundary in between your, if I go up and down, my icon changes to this arrow icon. I can now drag and reduce the volume of that music track so it's actually easier to hear the other track, which is the important stuff like your talking. Now, uh, you can see on the, this blue track here, I stopped talking from here to about there. What if I want the volume to be low when I am talking on the music, but high when I'm not talking? This is called ducking. So I can achieve this effect by going to this, uh, this music track layer. I'm just going to reduce it even further because I'm hearing on my headphones, it's a little bit overpowering. I can use my option key, holding it down, and put down a few keyframes. So I'm going to put keyframe here right at the moment where I stop talking, and maybe one about here, and one about here, and about here. So there's four points, and now I can increase the volume just in this region here. So now when I play it through, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, a little bit of music, and now the music comes right up. So I can, you know, dance to that, and then it comes right back down again when I'm talking about more boring stuff, and then etc. fire. So, titles, photographs, video clips, transitions, music tracks, ducking or manipulating the volume of your uh, music track or audio track. Make sure that I can hear you. You may, do, may need to increase the volume a little bit of your, of your uh, recording. Um, that's also helpful. So over here, I'm not very loud, so I can increase the volume of that area specifically by putting down my four key uh, keyframes there with an option key. And I can just boost that level up there a bit more. So now it's more a consistent sound level as I'm talking through. All right, now you're done. Don't send me a project file for your assignment submission. I won't be able to play it. A project file is kind of like an index of all the files and things you've put together. It, it's more like a, an instruction manual, more so than the actual file itself. So to finish off, you need to actually uh, compile or consolidate or render the whole thing as a file. So over here is the share icon. Click on that, click on file. And here you actually give it your files file name, so this is what it will be called. And then you will have like .mov or .abi, etc. appearing after that when you finally save it. And here I've got an estimated file size, 123 megabytes is not too bad. Here you can change the, the resolution of your video, so 1080p is pretty high quality, 720p is also acceptable. Um, and that will also reduce the file size, so it's gone down to 74 megabytes. And I can also change the quality of the compression. So for example, um, high is pretty good. Low, you'll find that your video, when you're finished with it, will have a bit of a, a low quality. It'll be a bit more blocky, a bit more grainy, and it won't be quite as crisp in terms of resolution. So you pick the one that's appropriate to try and keep your file size reasonable. Now, what is reasonable for your science assignment submission? Well, if it's gone uh, about a gigabyte or more, you've gone way too far. I think about 500 megs will be a good ballpark to shoot for. So for me, I don't have to worry about that. I'm only 64 megs, sorry, 74 megs. Uh, but you may need, need, may need to manipulate the resolution and the compression quality to make it fit. Once you're done with that, can you please submit it to Google Drive and I'll find some solution to get that to me later. All right, thanks guys, I hope it helped. Bye.